Welcome back to Ways to Love Your Money. I'm Elizabeth Dawson, and today we have a guest here, and you know, kids know everything, right? Uh, this is Miss Alexis Miller, and uh, I've known this little girl since she's about four years old, which is pretty amazing. I've seen her grow up into this beautiful young lady who's about to start high school here in the fall. Uh, life is changing, you know, and, and we wanted to have a conversation about, gosh, what's her relationship with money and her perspective at this point in her life? Uh, so again, welcome. Thank you for coming on the show today. I know it's kind of a nerve wracking thing. Yes? Yeah. Do you have any expectations of what you're going to get out of the show today? Um, you're just going to help me possibly improve my relationship with money and my outlook on money. Are you ready to improve your relationship with money? Well, I don't, yeah, because I don't really have one right now. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, you've been around our, our business here with mom for many years. Yeah. So I remember I have pictures that we kind of look back and, and see sometimes where you're sitting at the front desk and you're working and you, we were even teaching you how to answer the phone. Do you remember those days? Yeah, at the old office. Yes, yeah. And then I know at times when mom would have you come in and, and maybe even uh, do some paper shredding because I had both of my kids do that, so we had to keep the tradition going on with you, right? Yeah, I, I remember that. <laughs> There are funny times for us to actually have that conversation about because uh, we've always dreamt that, uh, you know, Alexis would be one of our yeah, maybe interns one summer or something like this. And when she actually grows and matures into her, you know, herself one day that maybe she'll find a, a career in the financial life. Who knows? But at this time, Ways to Love Your Money is a, is a money show, right? So uh, I know that we were talking a little bit about what is my take on allowance? So what kind of questions do you want to ask me about allowance? What do I feel about it? What, what is, what's the question? For a 13 year old, what's a good amount for an allowance? Let's say you're doing like three chores a night, such as cleaning your room, cleaning the bathrooms and the dishes. Like what's a good amount of allowance for that? Well, what would mom and dad value that work to be done three times a night? What do you think? If mom had a housekeeper come in full time and you're doing three of the jobs that that housekeeper was doing, it's not the whole house, it's just three jobs. So what are the jobs that you're doing right now? Um, I normally do the dishes. I clean my room. I clean my bathroom. I vacuum my room. I do basically everything for my own room. Okay. Sometimes I'll vacuum all the other rooms in the house. Okay. I do the I think I already said that, but I did the dishes. Uh -huh. um, I cleaned the doors recently. I cleaned the bathroom mirrors, stuff like that. Okay. So vacuuming just your room. I mean, if you don't take care of your room, it's kind of not good, right? Yeah. You have to live in it. If you want to live dirty, then you live dirty, yeah. right? So you're kind of doing a self-improvement for your for your room, right? That's your own little personal house, right? Yeah. And you have River, your dog. And River kind of lives in that house too, right? Your your room? Yeah. So we got a feeder. Do you help feed River? Yeah. Okay. Do, do you take her on a little walk for her to go outside? Um, we don't take her on walks. We let her out, let her run outside. Okay. Okay. And I heard she gets the umi zoomies, right? Yeah. <laughs> so she's got babies, right? A lot of babies. How many babies? A lot. There's too okay. many to count. Okay. So I want you to think about this. We got to take care of River. Got to take care of you. Then how do we take care of a little bit more for mom and dad? I can help my mom with like dinner if I if she needs help her organize okay. the cabinets, mm -hmm. which I've done before. Good. You learn those life skills now. Then when you get older, you'll have, you know, plenty of ideas. I know that you also have a really great relationship with your grandma, and you've been quite the baker since you were a little girl. Yeah. And sometimes you make me those dairy-free, you know, baked goods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I look at how maybe a, an allowance should be looked at is, are, are you helping mom and dad out? Are you learning things? And how much do you think mom and dad are spending on you during the week anyway on the things that you do like? What do you think they're spending on you? What do they buy you? They buy me food. Okay, well, food's a biggie, huh? And I think you have a, a real love for, I heard, Applebee's. 
I used to. Oh, now okay. it's something else. What's the something else now? Wings and things. Wings and things. Oh, yes, because you like Buffalo Wild Wings, right? Okay. So that's your new love? You love that? And do you ever see the bill when mom and dad get the bill? Um, no, because we don't ever go and eat like out oh. anymore. Okay. We get it. Um, we order it online. Okay. So I don't ever like get to see it because my dad order, orders it. Okay. And then we go and pick it up. So. All right. So then you have dinner at home. Yeah. So you can hang out with River. Yeah. Do you have to run and get the takeout when they when when you order it? Um, sometimes. Uh -huh. It depends on like, if I really really want it, I'll say like I'll even go with you. But sometimes I don't. Yeah, because then you get them. to nibble on it in the car, right? No. 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 Oh my. Well, you don't know how much that costs yet, right? Yeah. So what about how often does mom buy clothes for you? Um, actually, we don't often buy clothes unless I need it. We buy other things. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? What's the other things? Like stuff for my room. Um, yesterday we went and got. A laundry basket and little heart mirrors for oh. my room when we went for something completely different mm -hmm. but we didn't get that so what was the thing that you didn't get um we were looking for like a full body mirror oh but we couldn't find one that that you liked, liked. Yeah. yeah so so that all costs money right mm -hmm. so do you think that the work that you do for what mom and dad spend on you right now all those extra things helping you decorate your room, even though you haven't found everything yet. I know it's still like a year old project. Uh, maybe helping out River, you know, making sure she's taken care of, fed, all those things, right? And it's the extra little things, because I know even mom will take you to Starbucks once in a while, and if you don't go, I know, I hear about it. <laughs> so I know that that's kind of a routine that she puts River in the car and tells you or sometimes you're still sleeping on a Saturday morning and doesn't take you and you get really upset about that. Yeah. <laughs> so talking about allowance, I, I like this conversation with you because I just want you to get the concept of how much things cost. Uh, we were talking that all you're asking for is $10 a week. Mm -hmm. And then when I did the math and I said, well, it's $520 a year. That $10 a week, do you think you'd save any of it or do you think you'd just buy the things that you would want to buy? I'd probably save some of it. You do? Yeah. When you think about it, out of, out of a year, right? $520 out of a year, that's a little bit different than, oh, it's $10 a week. So there's a there's a concept I've given people in the past where, you know, I tell them, maybe if I, I've probably told mom and dad this, but take $200 out every week or every two weeks. 200 that's not even in your vocabulary yet. But parents, we need a lot more money to spend to get the things that we need for our kids, but also some things for us too. But it's that tangible relationship with money. You know, if, if you saw a hundred dollar bill sitting there in your wallet, what would you do? I'd either want to spend it or put it in the bank account so I don't spend it. Okay. So this is where I want you to start having a tangible relationship with money. So some of the exercises I've given people are $200 every couple weeks. Get a $100 bill from the teller, get a $50 bill from the teller, two $20 bills, and a 10. Because what's happened, and you're from Generation Z, so you're from this information age that's been, you know, technology's been in your life since I think before you were born, okay? So you've seen more images in your lifetime than someone that's maybe 90, 95 years of age today, which is an amazing thought process. You're going, oh my gosh, I've seen more than my grandparents have ever seen because you saw so much at a young age. Yeah. And for you, and this is really where I want to encourage you, even your friends, that when you have a better relationship with money and you can kind of visualize it, don't just think it by week. Because that $10, if you got it in cash or the two fives that you told me that mom might give you, you'll probably spend it really quick. But if you actually see it starting to accumulate and you don't think about it per week, you'll actually have more left over. So that $200, I'm going to go back to that. <laughs> People will spend that $10 bill really quick, yeah. just like I'm telling you. They'll spend the 220s really quick. They'll get to that $50 bill and they'll go, hmm, I don't know. I'm a little uncomfortable about spending it. It's a lot of money in that $50 one bill. And if we lost that one bill, we'd be pretty devastated, right? So then they break the $50 bill. They spend it. Now they get to the $100 bill. 
Think about whatever in your mind that big number is that you won't spend. Because most people at the end of that two weeks, they'll still have that $100 bill in their pocket, in their wallet, in their purse, because they don't want to spend that $100. So if you can start to think like this, then maybe it's not just, I'm going to go get, I know you said you love ice cream, but I'm not going to just go get ice cream. I'm not going to just go get a little frappuccino or something. But even if, if you can start thinking about this now, the rest of your life, these are the life lessons we were talking about. Because in school, they're not teaching you anything like this, right? They're not having a conversation with you about how you should know, but mom and dad are paying for their bills. They're not telling you how much it costs to feed your dog every month. And what did you say to me when we were talking on the couch? We were talking about when you get older, so when you're 18, 19 years of age and you want more money for stuff, not just getting the allowance, but now you're 18, 19, getting ready to go to college, all that kind of stuff. What are you going to have to do? Get a job. Going to have to get a job. So turn everything into a job. What kind of jobs can I do for mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, you know, aunts, uncles, whoever? What kind of jobs can I do right now? Because I don't want to work a 20 or 30 or 40 hour a week job right now because I'm still going to school. You can't. We talked about walking dogs. We talked about a few different things. I mean, one day, shoot, you might be the one working at Starbucks. And then you'll get your Frappuccinos for free. And that seems like a really big bonus, right? Yeah. But what can we do today when we bring it back to allowance conversation? What can we do today to kind of up the, up the ante with mom and dad and say, hey, I'm working hard. I'm working hard. I need an account. I need a bank account. Mom, dad, every week, you know, if we come up with an agreement, I want $10 a week or $5 a week. I don't know what it's going to do. Or maybe they'll give you more. Grandma and grandpas love to give grandbabies money. But if you start to see your bank account and you start to see it kind of getting bigger and bigger, you might not want to spend that 10 bucks every week if you get it in cash, right? One day you're going to need to have that relationship with how cash looks and feels. But today you might be in a position where, shoot, if I had $520 in that bank account in one year, what could you really do then? Or could you invest it for yourself later? We talked about maybe getting your first car or maybe there's certain things you have to do. The world of finance, a lot of people have a lot of anxiety about it, but you can make a choice not to have one. You can just say, hey, I'm good, right? Mm -hmm. Would you rather be good or would you rather be going, I don't know where that money's gonna come from. I'd rather be good. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So what else is on your mind? I know that you know a couple years ago we had a conversation about gymnastics. And you were doing gymnastics, you wouldn't even let me come to your meets. Yeah. <laughs> but I was so proud, so happy, so excited. But now you're kind of taking it into something else. What are you doing now? Cheer. How's that going? Good. Yeah? So what are you doing in cheer that you like that's different? Um, probably just because it's not like you're not up there by yourself. Okay. You're up there with other people. Yeah. The whole team. Okay. I love that word, team. It's all about a team. Team sports, and believe me, cheerleading is just as much a sport as anything else. So are they making you work out a lot? What are they doing? They make us run okay. a lot. Okay. And when they have us run, so we have our gym, mm -hmm. and then we have the other wings for the other classroom. So like here's the gym, right? Mm -hmm. And then here's the 200 wing, 300 wing, 400 wing, 500 wing. Okay. So. She'd make us run around the gym mm. in front of the 200 wings. We have to go downstairs okay. in front of the 200 wing, and then we have to go up the ramp and around the gym multiple times Okay. until she tells us to stop. How do you like running? I don't like it at all. You, you see they're trying to get you in shape. Yeah. Because cheerleading is a sport. Yeah. Are you using some of your gymnastics? Um, I'm not a tumbler because no? I just don't really like the tumble anymore oh. but I help other girls improve okay. with like their form and shape mm -hmm. because their shape is not as good because they didn't do gymnastics or tumbling before they did cheer. So why do you think you're kind of letting gymnastics that portion the tumbling go? You're just not doing it much but you're helping others. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just kind of fell out of love with it? So I saw, I heard that you just went to a new uh, high school to check it out to see if you wanted to go there this next year for fall. Yeah. You want to tell me a little bit about that? 
It's a really nice school. It's Valhalla High School. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Okay. Um, they have two gyms, I believe. Mm -hmm. One for basketball and one for wrestling. Okay. Valhalla's wrestling teams are supposedly really, ac actually really good. They have golf. They have swim, which I actually want to do swim and dive. Okay. Uh, they have water polo. They have basketball, football, mm -hmm. volleyball. Um, I might try out for volleyball. Okay. Um, and they have the cheer team, mm -hmm. which I might do. I don't know yet. Yeah. Well, you should start talking to the cheer coach now. Because if you don't, then you won't even have a shot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun, all those football games. You'd be in a lot of places. Basketball, too. See, that's kind of work. <laughs> And mom did swim. She loves swim. Yep. So you think you want to give that a shot? Yeah, because before, um, no, you actually knew me when I did swim, I think. Yeah, so during summers, I would take a break from gymnastics and do swim instead. Mm -hmm. And when I was about nine, we, were st we started doing laps and stuff. Okay. And then I had to quit because I was so tiny. But now that I'm bigger, mm -hmm. I can probably do better at swim mm -hmm. so I remember one time we went surfing do you remember that yeah yeah Carl showed you how to surf mm -hmm. yeah that was kind of fun you got up on the board right away you were still tiny and it wasn't that long ago and now you're like this grown young woman <laughs> I about fell off my chair one day when mom showed me a picture I'm like what happened <laughs> <laughs> well what's gonna be your favorite subject going into high school I don't know, probably history, just because it's easier for me to learn, and hmm. it's easier for me to remember. And why, why do you think that way? How is it easier for you to remember? Because for a lot of kids, it's really difficult. I don't know, my brain just starts to understand it more than okay. other subjects. You can remember the dates and keep them organized? Because everything's dates when it comes to history, right? Yeah. Yeah. What about math? So. Um, actually, our math teacher quit. Oh. So we had to get a new one, and now we're almost like a whole year behind in math. Oh, my. So that's great. Now, do you have to do any <laughs> special testing or anything like that when you go into high school? Um, at the end of each year, mm -hmm. from fifth, no, third grade to high school, we have, well, in middle school they're called something else, but we have like SAT test or CASP. I don't remember what they're called, but um, like fifth grade and eighth grade, you take a science test, and all the other grades, you take just math and English, Okay. but you take math, English, and science in eighth grade, so we have those, and there's state testing, and those help us get into honors and AP classes. Oh, okay. okay. So if you're going to do honors and AP classes, what do you think you would be doing those for? Are you going to try and go into, a, into college for a particular thing? Like I want to take the only AP class you can take in freshman year, okay. which is AP uh, Human Geology, I believe, oh, wow. okay. because I want college credits. <laughs> okay. So. so college credits, usually in those situations, you have to go to a UC school. Have you thought about a UC school that you'd be interested in? No? I haven't okay. really thought about any colleges. I just want to make sure that I have college credits okay. and all my credits. Okay. Yeah. So. Do you think you have any idea what you want to do, like what you want to learn from school when you go to college? Um, I've thought about like maybe like in the medical region or investigative, okay. but I don't know yet. Okay. Well, I know that you're big into computers just like your dad. I was. You were? You're not anymore? No. My seventh grade um, technology teacher ruined that for me. Oh, it's one person. Yeah. I Well, I asked you what you wanted to get out of being on the show today. And you said you want to have a little bit better relationship with money. My encouragement is to start talking to mom and dad a little bit more about those things. Get the idea of what things cost so that you actually know. Those are some of the life skills that uh, they're not teaching in school today. They're not teaching you. Uh, parents, that's, that's our best place to learn right? Mm -hmm. Mom and dad are doing well. You want to learn from what mom and dad are doing well with. And, you know, by the time you get to mom and dad's age, it's going to be different even for you because laws change, money changes, the value of the dollar decreases. So 
we understand that you need to have money to do the things that you want to do. But if we don't have enough of it, we don't get to have the lifestyle we want to have either, right? And sometimes when you get older, you start to get this relationship that I've got to save money because I don't want to be in a situation where I don't have anything to do the things that I need to do. Gosh, do I want to own a home one day? Do, you know, do I want to get married and have children one day? It's really way too early for you to think like that. But you might think, gosh, I want to have a house of my own one day. Well, the way you're going to do that is you got to go to work, right? Yeah. i got to have a job, and i got to save some money so that I can buy the house, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can do your whole house the way you'd want to, like your own dollhouse. And then it's yours, but you're working hard for it. And the appreciation you have for it is because you know how much it costs to work that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm sure you'll still be able to fit your cake pops in there and your frappuccinos. You know, and who knows what you're going to be craving by the time you get there. <laughs> but there's going to be so much more. So just work hard. Have fun, but work hard and start to understand, ooh, would I rather see that 520 or would I rather see that $10 and go spend it every week? 520. I'd rather see the 520 myself. And then maybe add a little interest on that. Maybe invest it somehow. By the time you get to 20, 22, 25, just imagine how much money you could have. Turn everything into a job, but make it fun. Because one of the things you said to me, too, is that your goal is not to have to work one day. <laughs> well, how do you think you get there? Um, you have to have a job. You have to have a job to earn the money. And then you can retire. Then you can retire. And if you want to retire younger, fantastic. Not everybody's going to win the lottery, right? Yeah. But I also said something to you, too. I said, if you do what you love, then it's really not work, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, the biggest advice I can give you is do what you love. And then when you get paid for it, it's a reward. It's a wonderful thing. Well, I love having Miss Lexi here on the show with us today. It's been an insightful journey, not only for me, but I'm hoping it was for you, too. And it's always a scary thing to talk about money, no matter what age you are, because it's intimidating, right? That's really where the book came from, Wealth by Design, because it is about, uh, we're, we're such an anxiety-driven culture, and we don't necessarily know how things work. But the study skills or the life skills, they just don't teach us this in school. Uh, we should be teaching this to our children by the time they're five years old, just little pieces, you know, little pieces, a little bit more each and every year, so that they have the concept of what money really is, or how much things cost, or how much does it cost to actually put food on the table. Uh, but then we should have participation within our children's lives too, so that they can feel that they're giving a contribution to what we're all working so hard for to enjoy the life we have. So it's it's a thrill. I hope that this helps you. I hope you share this with your children out there. And uh, remember, this is about a relationship with money. It doesn't have to be scary. We can have fun with it. But again, my biggest advice for Alexis is to um, whatever you choose to do, love what you do, and it really won't turn into work. That's my day every day. So stay tuned next week. There'll be another Ways to Love Your Money coming soon. The information provided in this show is for informational and educational purposes only. This show is not investment advice, nor is it intended to address the financial needs of any particular viewer. The opinions expressed on this show are not intended to be an endorsement of any particular investment strategy or service of any other kind. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned throughout the show. Before acting on information in this show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular situation and strongly consider seeking advice from a financial advisor.